Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel and today I have a lovely book box that has been sent to me for review once again. It is a box that I've opened here on the channel many times but there has been a little bit of a hiatus. I'm not exactly sure why that is but I'm guessing it's because she's making sure that she is getting the boxes out to all of the subscribers but I'm always happy to receive a down the rabbit hole book box for review. So you've probably already seen their updated box design but it's got this creepy little bunny friend gnawing on a skull and in case you couldn't tell from the image that means that this box is really designed for those of us who do enjoy a kind of a darker read so some mysteries some thrillers there's definitely quite a bit of horror which is not my favorite genre sometimes it's a little bit difficult for me to get through some of those books but I did really enjoy the book that was selected for the month of July yes that's how far behind we are because it was definitely a a literature classic as well as a dark read because of the topics um, but a beautiful book nonetheless it was Vladimir Nabokov's Lolita which is a book that I'm sure many of you read back in school it's been many years since I have read it but I remember loving the writing of course and it gave me an opportunity to actually listen to the audiobook this time around usually I read the paper copy because I want the full reading experience of a box like this but the the audiobook is narrated by Jeremy Irons, who also played the narrator in the movie adaptation, one of them, and it was just so, so well done. So that was definitely a delight to listen to his narration. I believe the movie that was with him, I think Lolita, I always want to say it was Kirsten Dunst, but I think it was Dominique Swain. So let me know in the comments below if you saw that movie. It's been a few years since I've seen it. I probably should have watched it again before I did this unboxing, but I wanted to get this posted as soon as possible since we are sort of behind. I am going to try to keep uh, keep things light on the channel during the holiday season so you'll probably just see one more down the rabbit hole book box unboxing before the year is out and then we might double up a little bit in the new year so we can get caught up if the boxes keep rolling in. So with down the rabbit hole book box it is always fun because there's usually a hint sort of a title for the box that doesn't give away the actual book. You can write in and ask if you want to know the title for sure just to make sure it's not a duplicate or just in case you want to avoid spoilers or reading ahead of time. So the theme for this box was No Sympathy for the Devil and then inside she always has like a little bio about the author and maybe some of the like critical reviews and just kind of gives you the rundown on what Down the Rabbit Hole book box is all about. It is $49.99 per month. That does include domestic shipping and again it does include not only the book and uh, the little brochure, it includes often a Spotify playlist list which is great, a bookmark with a quote, and then several gifts to bring the story to life. So it makes it a more engaging experience. It definitely helps me out when I am maybe struggling with a read just to like get get myself going, get through another chapter to know that there is a gift around the corner. And sometimes she does also includes some extras which we'll get to that in a second but if you are interested in subscribing to Down the Rabbit Hole Book Box you can use the link that I'll leave for you in the description box below and the code Noel15 in that that'll save you 15%. So let's talk about some of the extras. So we got two tea sachets that are Tchaikovsky, which I always think these uh, author-inspired teas are really fun. I'm not really sure about the uh, link here, but I'm guessing it's just because Tchaikovsky is Russian and um, Nabokov is also Russian. And then we also got, this is fun, she does often include like a big sticker pack and usually there's like 50 stickers in here. I'm not entirely sure how these are related to Lolita, but um, they definitely have kind of like a vintage feel to them, like this sunflower like floppy hat. We've got some of these like kind of vintage colors to them but just you can see there's a big stack of stickers which is always just kind of a fun extra kind of goes along with the vibe of the setting of the novel. And then here was a fabulous extra and I did appreciate all of the extras because we got several kind of gifts in boxes but one of the gifts was a paper gift you'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment so we got three main gifts and a paper gift and for me the paper gift definitely makes it bring the uh, novel to life a little bit sometimes uh, they'll write a letter in the voice of one of the characters for example but it's not really like a substantial item so I appreciate when she includes extra gifts like she has this time so we got this is pretty fun you guys the uh, Lolita heart-shaped sunglasses which of course 
course, I was kind of expecting, honestly, because these uh, are very iconic and they've definitely been sort of in our all of our brains. If you know anything about Lolita, even if you haven't read the book, but maybe seen the movies or even just seen like the movie poster, you know about these heart shaped sunglasses. Sometimes they're not these like cat eye ones. Sometimes they're a little bit more round, but there is a little card in here explaining it. So it thus says heart shaped glasses are a trademark accessory of Lolita, the title character in Vladimir Nabokov's 1955 novel. So again, you're kind of getting the vibe on the time period. Um, so here's the thing, you guys. I I know that Lolita is kind of part of the zeitgeist. It's zeitgeist. It's part of our lexicon. You know what you're talking about when someone says they're kind of a Lolita. Um, you know, like the taboo topic that is in the book as well. Uh, but I double checked again <laughs> as I was listening, and there is actually no mention of the heart shaped sunglasses. I think that that is just from the movie poster. I don't even think that the heart shaped sunglasses appeared in the movie. I think I read something about that on Google when I was trying to verify. But if you guys know the passage where there's heart shaped sunglasses in the book, by all means, please let me know. But I don't think they are. So that's just kind of an interesting thing how Lolita has become part of our pop culture. But I don't think that particular part is in in there. So, of course, there are definitely iconic lines like, you know, Lolita, fire of my loins. And my very favorite is, of course, picnic, comma, lightning. That's like the best. It's just like so much in that little phrase. But let's go ahead and get into the book. So like I said, uh, we have our bookmark. So we have um, this quote, which says, all at once, we were madly, clumsily, shamelessly, agonizingly in love with each other. Hopelessly, I should add, because that frenzy of mutual possession might have been assuaged only by our actually imbibing and assimilating every particle of each other's soul and flesh. But there we were, unable to mate as slum children would have so easily found an opportunity to do so. So it's like, wow, like that writing is just so intense and also so gorgeous. So let me find our first gift, which was on page 51. They were all pretty early in the book, in all honesty. I like them usually when they're a little more spaced out. So this is what it looks like now when you come across a sticky note in a Down the Rabbit Hole book box. So it's got that same little pink bunny that's just gnawing away on that skull. So let me see if I can remember what the gift was. Okay. Oh, so this was a great passage. It says, let's see. Uh, so he's writing, of course, about Lolita and living in the same house as her as a boarder. So let's see. Sunday. Changeful, bad-tempered, cheerful, awkward, graceful with the tart grace of her cultish subteens, excruciatingly desirable from head to foot, all New England for a lady writer's pen, from the black ready-made bow and bobby pins holding her hair in place to the little scar on the lower part of her neat calf where a roller skater kicked her in pisky, a couple of inches above her rough white sock, gone with her mother to the Hamiltons, a birthday party or something, full-skirted gingham frock, her little doves seem well-formed already precocious pet. Uh, I probably should be reading it in a British accent, but uh, maybe we'll do that for the next passage. So we have gift number one, and this was actually uh, quite a bountiful gift. Can you tell what it is? So we did have that mention of her rough white sock, but we actually got five pairs of socks and these are like very girlish and I can see how they're very like Lolita so these are very on trend right now for people to wear these embellished kind of across between tights and socks um, and then with sandals so you actually see all of this through the sandals it's very kind of Parisian so with the little ruffles though it, it does have that sort of coquettish Lolita vibe but we actually got five pairs of these socks. Let's actually have socks be a secret password today. So if you're new to my channel, we have secret password giveaways. So when you come across a secret password, you wanna enter it along with your contact information in the Google form that is linked for you in the description box below. And then about five days into the following month, so around December 5th, I will use a random number picker to select a few winners to receive a mystery box as my way of saying thank you for watching my videos. Uh, you do have to be 18 years or older. You do have to be subscribed to my channel. It doesn't have to be publicly. I can verify you 
with you via email. Uh, you do have to have a US or Canadian mailing address. And just as a reminder, it's not affiliated with YouTube in any way or any of the boxes that I open here on the channel. It's just my way of saying thank you and sharing some of these goodies with you. But today's secret password is socks because as my longtime viewers know, I just love socks so much. <laughs> but these are very pretty. It's just kind of an interesting because I, I thought of her rough white socks as being a little bit different, but that was a good interpretation that I feel like people could use. And it's not exactly my style, but um, we definitely uh, have something that we could pass on to other people. So gift number two came on page 97, and this was the paper gift. So let me see if I can find that passage. So Charlotte is uh, the is Lolita's mother, Dolores's mother, and uh, who uh, Humbert Humbert is going to eventually marry. Uh, so it says, so Charlotte sauntered in. She felt all was not well between us. I pretended to fall asleep the night before and the night before that, and as soon as we had gone to bed and risen at dawn. Tenderly, she inquired if she were not interrupting. Not at the moment, I said, turning volume C of the girl's encyclopedia around to examine a picture printed bottom edge, as printers say. Charlotte went up to the little table of imitation mahogany with a drawer. She put her hand upon it. The little table was ugly, no doubt, but it hadn't done nothing to her. I have always wanted to ask you, she said, businesslike, not coquettish. Why is this thing locked up? Do you want it in this room? It's so abominably uncouth. Leave it alone, I said. I was camping in Scandinavia. Is there a key? Hidden. Oh, hump. Locked up love letters. She gave me one of those wounded doe looks that irritated me so much. So, of course, he does actually basically have locked up love letters. Eventually, she does break into that desk. I don't think I'm giving any spoilers away. Like I said, this is very much a classic. So, we got a letter. So, we have a nice little letter. For me, again, this doesn't add much value to the box, but it adds to the experience. So let me know in the comments below what you think about paper gifts. I think that they're okay, especially if the other gifts that are in the box are of higher value. If there's like kind of a hero item where you can see that was probably a little pricier, or if you get little extras like this as well that aren't necessarily ones that are associated with a page. So of course we have this letter, which is typed but in a script, and it's supposed to be one of his love letters. Uh, to I think Lolita yes so dearest Lolita I wish for a time to come where I can write you love letters that I don't have to hide from the world so very uh, challenging whoever did write that to try to write in the voice of Humbert Humbert from the pen of Nabokov that seems like a I wouldn't undertake that so kudos to the person who did but that is a way to just kind of add a little add a little content I guess to the to the box all right, then on page 127, we have um, our gift number three. These sticky notes really like stick to the page. They're hard to like pull off. So now um, Charlotte has met her demise. And so Humbert, who is not, of course, actually her father, but kind of a stepfather, has decided to take her uh, on some travels. And he has some not so um, not so great intentions. Look here, Lo, let's settle this once for all. For all practical purposes, I am your father. I have a feeling of great tenderness for you. In your mother's absence, I am responsible for your welfare. We are not rich, and while we travel, we shall be obliged. We shall be thrown a good deal together. Two people sharing one room inevitably enter into a kind of, how shall I say, a kind, the word is incest, said Lo, and walked into the closet and walked out again with a young golden giggle, opened the adjoining door, and after carefully peering inside with her strange, smoky eyes lest she make another mistake, retired to the bathroom. I opened the window, tore off my sweat-drenched shirt, changed, checked the pill vial in my coat pocket, unlocked the... She drifted out. I tried to embrace her, casually, a bit of controlled tenderness before dinner. She said, look, let's cut out the kissing game and get something to eat. Mm-hmm. So... He has intentions to basically drug her, <laughs> which is not great. So in this box, we actually got two little pill boxes, which are pretty cute and definitely functional. I have gotten pill boxes before and I never really know what to do with them, but I should actually just start traveling with them and keeping them in my purse because inevitably when we are traveling, my husband will ask me if I have an Advil on hand and I'm usually like, oh, it's like in the checked luggage, I don't. So they do have little mirrors and then they do have a little three divider uh, situation 
collection, but we got two of them, both with butterflies. So I don't know that these are exactly the kinds of pill vials that uh, Humbert Humbert would have in his pockets, but these were a cute item, I thought, for this box. And then finally, we have gift number four. Now, I was a little confused by gift number four because I wasn't sure that the passage really warranted this particular gift, but you guys will have to let me know. You know, sometimes the things are actually very literal in terms of the gifts that we receive. Sometimes they're a little bit of an interpretation like with the socks, which is a good thing because I wouldn't necessarily want girls like rough white socks, but maybe these little frilly ones that are very Lolita-esque might be more appropriate and they're also kind of on trend. But this one, which was a big one, I was kind of confused by. So sometimes I wonder if by accident it's like on the wrong page, but I kind of like looked at the pages surrounding it and I still couldn't like figure out exactly what it was supposed to be. But um, so Lolita has escaped his clutches essentially, but he is uh, searching for her for several years and he winds up kind of retracing their steps almost to see where, um, see if he can find her. So he goes back to where they used to live before the great bloodshed, I was entitled to a little relief, to a cathartic spasm of mental regurgitation, closed with the white shutters of the junk mansion, and somebody had attached a found black velvet hair ribbon to the white for sale sign which was leaning toward the sidewalk. No dog barked, no gardener telephoned, no miss opposite sat on the vined porch, where to the lone pedestrian's annoyance, two pony-tailed young women in identical polka-dotted pinafores stopped doing whatever they were doing to stare at him. Him. She was long dead, no doubt. These might be her twin nieces from Philadelphia. So there was, you know, the woman across the street, essentially, and this is where the uh, great accident occurred that allowed Humbert to run away with Lo. So here we go. And of course, Lolita, Dolores, um, Lo, and uh, it's, you know, so much is important uh, with the, the preface, the introduction, which explains why this book is being published, uh, because it's only after the narrator's uh, demise, after his death. So it's definitely worth reading that, at, obviously, at the beginning of the book where it is placed, and then again later on, because then you kind of learn a little bit more. All right, so we got this pearl velvet headband, which is cute. Um, it's a little bit, again, girly for me, but again, headbands are kind of on trend again. I don't know why that is. All of these sort of trends are coming back, but it's very padded, very cushy. It's almost like a crown, but it feels very proper, right? Especially if you wore it with like a cute little dress and those those frilly socks and some sandals. It'd be very, very proper indeed. But yes, it feels very much like a crown. But I'm thinking that that came from the, let's see, the black velvet hair ribbon. So maybe this was supposed to be a black velvet um, hairband. It is velvet. On the facing page, there is, I was looking for like any mention of pearls and he does run into someone who knew Dolly or Dolores or Lo or Lolita and see, she says, she was a stout short woman in a pearl in pearl gray with a long gray slim plume to her small hat. And this is almost like a small hat, but I think that it was supposed to be about the black velvet hair ribbon, which is not a particularly important part in the story. So I'm still a little confused by this gift. So this is one where I would say, um, I thought the gifts in general were good items, but for me, I couldn't figure out the inspiration for this one. You guys let me know. I just think it's so interesting to think about Lolita as this, this, I mean, it's such a force in literature. And yes, it does have a terrible, terrible topic. And if it's like, it talks, it makes you think about, um, what, 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 how we value things. Like, is, is it truly a work of art or should we not be applauding it as much as it is applauded? And it definitely is, even though it's basically a, pedophilia and sexual abuse that happens in this book from the from the voice of of the of the narrator so but the writing is just it is really really fabulous i just think it's very interesting to think about it and how it's kind of filtered down from the original novel into having things like this like being a coquettish girl that wears short skirts and you know i think that's really it is sort of natural for like 
13, 14 year olds to want to act very grown up and to start to become sexualized and use that to their advantage. And I'm not trying to victim blame Lolita at all here, but uh, it is just like kind of an interesting cultural phenomenon and how it was dealt with in this book and how it's still sort of accepted. Uh, but also like things like the sunglasses that we all associate Lolita with heart-shaped sunglasses and they don't appear in the book. So do I look like a Lolita with this and my frilly socks on? I don't know you guys, you let me know. But I did really enjoy this as a selection from Down the Rabbit Hole Book Box and I would love to see more sort of classics. She's definitely included books from like the 50s and 60s which I've just never gotten around to reading and I do think that's one of the selling points of this particular book subscription. If you got to this point, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you go back and find that secret password and enter it in the Google form linked below and I'll see you soon in my next unboxing.